What's up everybody? Glad you could join me today. Uh, today's video uh, is a special one to me. I think this is one of the ones where I learned something critical that's going to help me move forward as a bladesmith in ways that I was unable to before. If you're like me and you don't have a power hammer or a forge press, all you have is the power of your arm, your hammer, and an anvil, and you want to make Damascus, uh, this video is for you. Um, there is some failure that uh, led me to persistently figure out why I'm having these failures. So go ahead and join me as I work through from failure to success at forge welding layers of 5160 and bandsaw blades. Okay, so same basic billet as last time, same stack up, everything else. I tried to clean the steel a little bit better this time, but there's still slight pitting. It's hard to show here. And these uh, thin pieces, they're just so thin, I can only take off so much. Okay, all tacked up and thoroughly coated with the flux sauce while still warm from being welded. Let's give it a go. flux I use has been caught and reused. So uh, that flux actually isn't perfectly clean. So this time around, I'm not, uh, not going to keep applying flux into the sides each time. I'm going to hope what was in there in the beginning was enough to do the welding. So uh, that was two separate heats just trying to tap it close. And uh, this third time, I'm going to wail on it. I mean, I'm going to get this big hammer and I'm going to wail. We'll see what happens. it seems welded. Uh, I just hope and pray that's the case. <laughs> uh, if it doesn't work this time, I'm blaming either 5160 steel or uh, old flux that I should replace with new borax. Anyway, Let's see if the adjustments and changes I made from last time made a difference in the quality of my forge welded billet. Hmm. Well, would you looky there. Isn't that just a beautiful... No. It's not beautiful. It's terrible. As it, uh... As it really, I mean... I know it's been a while since I really properly did Damascus, probably a year and a half, maybe, me. But, uh, wow, that's bad. <laughs> um, as I consider and think back on all my Damascus projects that didn't turn out the way I wanted them to, I sort of feel like there's a theme, and I think that theme might be 5160. Okay, so the persistent bugger that I am, I can't let this project beat me. I've never had such bad forge welds in my entire life. However, I've never really tried to include 
large amounts of 5160 into the billet. And uh, it seems 5160 is a little bit more challenging than some other steels to get the forge weld, but it doesn't mean it can't be done. Uh, I've been consulting with some other smiths, and one master smith in particular. I don't want to name him because I don't want anyone else flooding him with messages like I do. <laughs> but uh, essentially, uh, he advised me that 5160 will forge weld just fine. It's just got to be really, really good and hot, well soaked, and perfectly spotless clean. And uh, I kind of already knew the spotless clean thing, but I haven't really obeyed that rule of thumb super well. I oftentimes use metal that's got slight bits of pitting in it, and I just too lazy to clean it up good enough, or the material is too thin, and I don't want to remove too much of it. Um, I gotta do this one more time. I can't walk away from this project with still a little bit of 5160 uh, on my shelf. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a, one more try. Um, of, of the other Smiths, several uh, have suggested the idea that I go ahead and weld a sacrificial pieces of mild steel on the sides to completely seal it, no flux, and just forge weld it that way. And so I think I'm going to give that a try. Okay, so the only change in the stack up this time is I'm using this piece of old lumber mill bandsaw blade. I cut this off the back side and I cleaned it up. Now this bandsaw blade doesn't have all the pits in it that the other one had. So, that's clean, clean, clean. Alright, I got mild steel plate here, mild steel plate here, mild steel plate here, and I completely welded in the back side. Got to admit, a little nervous about trying to forge weld without flux, but I believe I've got that billet sealed off from air. Uh, that would cause scale. Um, I've got that forge just the humming about as hot as it can go. I think this is going to be a good, good long soak. That's a lot of steel. That's a big hunk in there, uh, especially with those extra plates I put on there to seal it up. If this fails this time, I mean, there's only two things I could even think to to point to. It'll either be my forge just doesn't get hot enough, or I'll be striking it in such a way that I'm not allowing it to set good welds. got a Christmas present to open. I pray that it's something good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut these sides off see what it looks like. So uh, I just cut the, uh, the sacrificial mild steel off there and look at the inside of that. That looks interesting. No scale on this side at all. A little concerned about discoloration. This side has more discoloration but I mean I don't see any obvious scale on there. Um, I don't know. I can't really tell if it welded good. I think I'm gonna have to grind into it a little bit <clears throat> and see. Well, not looking as good as I thought it was. I'm gonna cut a little deeper into it and, uh, man, I gotta say, I'm starting to get disappointed. Okay, so before I give these guys the flux treatment and take them back to the forge, uh, I want you to see they still didn't weld good. And uh, my suspicion is it's the size of the billets and shapes. Um, they're so wide that uh, it's hard to get enough hammer blows, I think, where you need them to be while it's at welding temperature. Take a look.
not welded good. And in case you're wondering, that's a cut that I made directly through the middle. So that's not the outside edges. That's dead center of that billet. A couple of those outer layers just didn't weld good. And uh, I think it's a combination of my hammer strikes and the overall temperature of that. I've isolated pretty much every other factor that it could be. So it has to be my hammer strikes and the particular temperature of those billets. I think they're getting up to a high enough temperature, but I don't think I'm getting my hammer strikes in quick enough because of the size of the billet before certain portions of the billet cool down a bit. I'm even preheating the preheated anvil so hot that you can't lean your hand on it. And uh, so I'm hoping by making these two billets smaller, rather the one billet into two smaller billets, maybe I'll be able to get that to re-weld or rather weld the first time. Because, I mean, these billets were originally completely encased, so they shouldn't have gotten to any oxygen while they were hot. So, let's give it a go. Alright, this time, two pound hammer. I'm going for speed. See if I can get those things to weld before the outer layers cool off. Okay, I went through about three, three or four other heats off camera with that hammer right there. Um, I really, really, really would like to mash that down more and even tap on the sides to keep it from mushrooming out so much on the strike surfaces. But I think, well, I'm 99.999% sure now, those welds are good. Um, but as soon as I start tapping it on the sides, that could change. <laughs> Uh, there's a part of me that wants to gently step, tap on the sides due to uh, the, the mushrooming out. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe I'll do it with one and then not with the other. See what happens. Uh, I don't know. billets are welded I just I gotta move them before I lose too much to scale I gotta flatten them down I believe they're welded uh, I'm, I'm gonna bash on them with this big guy here and uh, that's definitely gonna cover the entire width of surface at a time so hopefully this surface isn't too round and it disrupts what I've done but I, I got it I gotta get moving I can't stay here all night Well, I've had about all I can take for now. But one thing's for sure, I was whacking these billets on the side and nothing was opening up. So uh, I would say that's, that's pretty encouraging. I'm just gonna let them normalize here on the anvil and uh, I'll come back and check on them later. Okay, so I don't plan to clean up these sides until the very end. But I did nip the welds off the end so that we get rid of all the not so good steel and get a kind of a glimpse of how those welds went. Um, I don't know about you, but that looks pretty good. There's a couple of imperfections in there. I don't know if you can see them on camera, but there's not much and that's still really close to the end. So I think we're welded pretty good at this point. Uh, I don't know if I want to stack and then pound or pound these down thinner individually. Okay, so off camera, I did one more forging session yesterday where I took these two billets and I smashed them down even more to try to thin them out in preparation for my next stack up. Which I don't think I'm gonna include in this video. This video is already getting kind of long. But as you can clearly see, let me show you. Here are those final two billets with the ends cut off. That end, and this end. Just touched them with a little bit of muriatic acid so you could see the layers. 
these billets welded really well. I, I'm super stoked with how they're turning out. Uh, I have every degree of confidence that the rest of those billets should be just as high quality as the ends where I, where I cut things off and kind of got a little bit of a peek. Okay, so if you made it this far in this video, then you're probably interested in the lessons that were learned here. So let me bring it to a conclusion for you. In order to get good welds, I find four principles at work if you are using hand hammered techniques. Number one, clean steel. This is not new, everybody knows it. <laughs> Number two, and this is probably the most critical part that I think really needs to be taken into account. You can only go so fast by hand. So the size of your billet means everything. If you try to bite off more than you can chew with too big of a billet, you're not gonna be able to do number three, which is to strike fast and distribute pressure across all the surfaces before that billet loses forge welding temperature. So that this is critical. Number two and three work together in harmony to get you better welds. <clears throat> Number four, do not, do not try to move that steel too much and crunch it down too aggressively until you are sure it is forge welded. So those same principles two and three where you have to strike fast and distribute that force as evenly as possible before you lose forge welding temperature, you've gotta do that multiple times just to be sure it's all welded before you go to hammering on that steel. Um, so all these things combined are things I have to remember moving forward. So if I have to, I'm going to replay this vlog in the future to be sure I remember these critical things if you're gonna do it by hand. You can't watch videos about what people are doing with forge presses and power hammers because it's just, it's just different. There are principles at play that are similar, obviously, it's about force distribution and pressure. And what does all this say, really, at the end of the day? Uh, it points to a character flaw in myself. I'm in too much of a hurry. If you wanna do good work, you've either just got to have tools that can help you get done more efficiently, forge press or power hammer, which someday I hope to have, but for now, I don't have those things. I just have to be patient and I have to go slower. Absolutely critical. So hopefully those lessons uh, will help you to become a better smith. I know they're going to help me to become a better smith. And I'm going to refer back to this video if I go through a long stretch between the times I make Damascus to, to remember the things that got me to this success this time. All right, with that said, guys, hey, forge on and uh, have a blessed day. Check you guys later.